Most people think the Blue Axolotl is a Minecraft rarest mob, but there's actually tons of other illegal mobs that most people don't even know exist. So to actually see how illegal these mobs are, I'm gonna collect them all, most of which have never been obtained in hardcore Minecraft. And the first mob on the list is the Zombie Horse. This mob is so extremely rare that only a few people have ever even seen it in pure survival. To get it, I need to head to the Infinite Dimension snapshot. Now I need to type Q3 onto a book and then throw it into another portal to enter Dimension Z. And as you can see, it's just a little bit different than a normal Minecraft world. Anyways, now I need to build a small platform where the zombie horse will spawn at. So now I can go up an AFK and when I check back, there should be one there. Um, I may have underestimated how hard this will actually be. And after doing some more research, it's actually a lot more rare than I first thought. So whilst I wait for the zombie horse to spawn, I think I'm going to start working on some of the easier mobs first and then work my way up to some of the harder ones. So that means I'm starting with the killer bunny. And to get it, I need to head to 14W28A and any bunny that spawns has a 1 in 2,500 chance of being the killer bunny. And there it is. Hello. And now I just need to transfer it back to the main world and then build a cage for it. So say hello to the corridor. Basically, each mob is going to have their cage theme to where the mob spawns. So the killer bunnies is going to be a birch forest. And I know he doesn't seem like much, but as the video goes on, the mobs will be getting crazier and crazier, even some that literally nobody knows about. The next mob on the list is a zombie piglin without a sword. And to get it, I need to head to the 2013 April Fools update. And in this update, there's a bunch of weird things like retextured mobs and blocks that literally talk to you when you break them. Now I need to head to the nether, and as you can see, the piglins have enchanted signs instead of swords in their hands. I need to lure one of them into the overworld, and then with a program called MCA Selector, I can transfer him to the main world. And then because the sign doesn't transfer over, the piglin will have nothing in his hands, and he doesn't have a sword. And that's the zombie piglin without a sword trap. Now the next mob is an upside down villager on a chicken. And to get it, I first need to find a baby zombie villager on a chicken, which has a 1 in 3,200 chance of spawning. So because I don't want to sit here and wait my whole entire life for one to spawn, I need to build a mob grinder. But firstly, I need some materials like stone slabs, redstone, and glass. And with all the materials, I can start building it. And this farm isn't really difficult to build. I just need to build a 15 by 15 diamond shaped spawning platform like this. Then repeat it 10 stories up. And how the farm works is when this redstone loop turns on the water dispensers, it pushes all the mobs down to the bottom. Then while the normal mobs despawn down here, the chicken jockeys will flow up this tube to an area where they won't despawn. And after AFKing overnight, it looks like the farm worked. Now all I need to do is carry carefully sift out the zombie villager and cure him to a normal one. Now that he's all grown up, I need to give him the dinner bone tag, which if you didn't know, makes any mob that you give it to upside down. And because he's a villager, I'm gonna make his cage a village theme. And just like that, that's officially the villager on a chicken trap. Now the next two mobs are the stray and wither skeleton on a skeleton horse. And to get the stray, it's actually really simple. All I need to do is sit here and wait for a lightning storm, then wait for lightning to strike and summon a skeleton horse trap. Then if you didn't know how these work, if you get too close, it'll actually summon a bunch of skeleton horse riders. And while I was running home, I actually found one with a full gold armor, which makes it even more rare. And these guys are so annoying. Like, I'm literally a porcupine. Anyways, now I need to go get a bunch of powdered snow and then put it in a hole with the skeleton jockey. And what that does is it turns the skeleton into a stray. So that's one out of the two collected. Now, the wither skeleton variant is a little harder to obtain. To get it, I need to head to 1.9, then collect lots and lots of sand to turn it into glass. Now I need to build a huge spawning platform with water flowing into nether portals and then wait for lightning to strike it. And then finally, I need to enter the nether to activate it. And the reason this works is because in 1.9, when a skeleton is spawned in the nether, it has a chance of being the wither skeleton. Anyways, now I need to transfer them back to the main world and then build a cage for both of them. So that's the wither skeleton and stray trapped. Now for the next mob, I want to switch it up a bit and head to an update not many of you know about called 3D Shareware. And as you can see, it looks a bit weird. And that's actually because it's meant to replicate video games in the 90s. Anyways, if you look around, you'll find lots of weird barrels and random illegal items. Is that a potion of luck? Um, I guess I'm more lucky now. I'm getting sidetracked. The reason I'm here in the first place is to get a legendary horse that can jump over 34 blocks in the air and run faster than an elytra. To get it, I need to type the command, how do you turn this on, and it spawns the horse in. Bro, he jumped so high, I wonder what else he can... Let's just forget that happened. But now I just need to transfer him back to the main world and put him in his cage. With the addition of the god horse, we already have six mobs down, and I'm gonna be honest, this place is looking pretty cool. But we still have lots of mobs to collect if we want to get this whole thing filled out. So with that being said, the next mobs on the list kind of go hand in hand, and that's because of the piglin and drowned on a chicken. So first to get the drowned, I need to head to 18w16a, gear up, and find a zombie spawner. Now by placing down water, the zombies will turn into drowns. And in this update specifically, there's a 1 in 500 chance they will be riding a chicken. So now I just AFK, and this 
this really shouldn't take too long. That took three hours. Anyways, now I just transfer him to the main world, and that's one out of the two collect. Now for the piglin jockey, I'll have to go to 20w11a, and what I'm doing here is pretty much the same deal, except this time it'll be in the nether. The first step is to dig out a room where the piglins will spawn, and then place nether portals that they can enter. Now I need to build super high up and wait for all these piglins below to enter the nether portal. And when piglins zombify in this update, they'll have a 1 in 600 chance to transform onto a chicken. And this farm works by luring the piglins around the edge with warped fungus. And then they'll just enter the nether portals accidentally. And as for the hogs, they pathfind down into the pit, which is out of my reach, so they'll despawn. Okay, it's been roughly two hours of AFKing, so let's go see if one spawns. Yes, there it is. Now I just gotta transfer him to the main world. And what's kind of cool about him is he can't actually hit me, so he's kind of like a peaceful piglin. Now the next mob is so ridiculous that you'll probably think it's fake. But before I get to that, if you're watching this video in the first couple months of its release, you still have a chance to be subscribed to me before I hit 25k subscribers. It's been a dream of mine ever since I was a kid, and once I hit it, you'll never be able to say you were here before then. So if you want to help and make my childhood dream come true, please consider subscribing. It would really mean a lot. Anyways, as I was saying, the next mob is a chicken that literally lays diamonds. In order to find this mob, I need to go to the Minecraft 2.0 update, or in other words, the 2013 April Fool's update I already visited. Now I just need to search for it because it says here on the wiki, it rarely spawns instead of a normal chicken but i'll know i found it because it's literally blue uh i was expecting that to take like two hours that was like one minute of searching ow i didn't know he attacks me and apparently diamonds aren't the only thing it lays because i've been getting some lapis unfortunately i can't take the mob back to 1.20 because there's no data for the mob so i think i'll just build the cage for the mob here and technically i still trapped it what did i just walk back to there was literally just a random explosion and it killed the chicken yeah apparently furnaces overheat in this update and explode and because i left the furnace on too long i guess it just exploded and killed the chicken okay i found another one let's just hope this one doesn't blow up okay i just need to put you in your cage now and that's the diamond laying chicken officially trapped now the next two mobs are both obtainable in 1.20 with commands but not in survival and those are the giant zombie and illusioner so to get the giant i need to go to the infinite dimension snapshot again and then go to dimension z now the reason the giant doesn't spawn in survival is because it needs a light level lower than 8 but also greater than 11 but for some reason in this dimension that doesn't happen and it can still spawn Okay, now I just need to look around and find the giant, and it shouldn't be too hard to miss as it's literally seven times my height. Okay, and there he is. Now I'll build a super large nether portal to bring him back to the overworld and transfer him back to 1.20. So the thing about the giant is it can't actually attack me to follow me because I'm too low down. And because I can't use a lead on a giant, I'll have to use a minecart to bring him all the way over to his cage. So why not make a sick edit out of it? Now I gotta make it fall down this hole, and that's the giant trapped. Now next for the illusioner, I'll head back to the same update as I got the giant in. Only issue is, unlike the giant, I don't know which dimension it's found in. And if you didn't know, there's over 2 billion dimensions. So that means if I spent an average of 5 minutes in each dimension, it would take me 22,000 years. Bro, I got school tomorrow. But luckily while I was scrolling through the discontinued features wiki, I found that it spawns in dimension A. And it was actually true because I found the illusioner right away. Oh, I can't see a thing. Okay, now I need to bring it back to the overworld so I can transfer the chunks to my main world. And I think it'd be pretty cool if I made the illusioner's cage an illusion. So I think I'm going to collect some white and black concrete to create a cool alternating pattern for the cage. Yeah, that turned out pretty cool. Okay, and with that, that's the 11th mob officially trapped. Now the next mob isn't really a mob, and it's actually a mob stack with tons of different mobs stacked on top of each other. To do this, I need to go to the one block at a time update, and in this update, you can only hold one block. And the reason I came here is because you can literally pick up multiple mobs and create a stack. So say hello to Billy and he's graciously volunteered to be the bottom of the stack. And my plan is to throw a bunch of mobs slowly getting smaller on top of him to create the ultimate mob stack. So the first mob I want to stack on him is the cow because it's just a little bit smaller than the panda. Next up is the sheep for the same reasoning. Then the pig, chicken, and finally bunny. Okay, now with the full stack, I need to transfer it to my main world. And there's no more room left. And that's the mob stack trap. While we're on the topic of mob stacks, the next mob is a triple strider. And currently in 1.20, only a two stack can spawn. So to get the triple strider, I need to go back in time to 20w17a, which was all the way back when striders were first added. And back then, they could actually spawn with a stack of three. And I don't really know the spawn chances of it, so I'm just gonna hope it doesn't take too long. 
Yes, there it is. Now I just need to build over to them and then wait for them to grow up. Now with them fully grown, I can transfer them to the main world. And that's the triple strider trap. For the next two mobs, I want to do something a little different. You see, in the one block at a time update, you can throw certain blocks like barrels and jack-o'-lanterns onto villagers and evokers. And I want to use this mechanic to create illegal mobs. But I need a crafting table to get both these blocks. And because I can't craft a crafting table, I'll need to find a spruce village which has a chance to naturally spawn them. So let's get searching. Yes, that's a spruce village. Now hopefully it has a crafting table. It doesn't. Please just have a crafting table. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to place it in a hole and surround it with this wood to turn it into a barrel. And the next step is pretty self-explanatory. Anyways, the other variation I wanted to collect was the evoker with a carved pumpkin on its head. So first I need to find a pumpkin, and luckily there's lots at this village. Now I need to go searching for a shipwreck. And the reason I'm doing this is because I need two iron to craft shears. And because I can't click the crafting table, I need to throw the iron onto it. Now with the carved pumpkin, I need to find a woodland mansion because that's where the evoker spawns. The nearest mansion is 4,000 blocks away. Oh my god, zombie. Come on, die already. What? There's no way that just happened. Yes, I'm finally at the mansion, and I need to enter it really safely because I have no armor. Okay, that's the evoker right there, so I'm just gonna throw the pumpkin on its head really fast and then get out of here. Okay, come on. Uh... Okay, that's it. Now I just gotta get out of here. And now I just gotta transfer them both. So that's the Barrel Villager and Carved Pumpkin Evoker trapped. With these two mobs collected, I have a total of 12 illegal mobs to my name. So the next mob up is a dual wielding mob. And to get it, I need to go to 1.8.9. Now I need to find any mob with a full armor set on. So let's get searching. Uh, that was faster than expected, but anyways, now I need to upgrade the world directly to 1.20. And the reason I'm doing this is because mobs with armor before 1.9 theoretically should hold them when you transfer it above 1.9. And it's likely caused by the 1.9 combat update with the introduction of the offhand. So theoretically, when I open the upgraded world, it should be holding its armor. Yes, that's the dual wielding mob. And to my knowledge, that's the only way to get one in survival. And by now, you know the drill. Transfer it to the main world and trap it. Okay, now the next mob is one you've most likely never heard about, and it's the Wither Skeleton on a Spider. And to get it, I need to do a couple of things. First, I need to go to 11W49A and get a Spider Spawn Egg. And to do that, it's pretty complicated. I need to press B, and that's it. Yeah, in this update, they just give you creative mode in Hardcore. And using that, I can get as much Spawn Eggs as I want. And it can't hurt too much if I take a couple of these. Anyways, with the Spider Spawn Eggs, now I need to go to 1.10.2 and enter the Nether. And every time I spawn a Spider, there's a 1% chance a skeleton will be riding it. And in this update, there's an 80% chance when a skeleton spawns here, there will be a wither skeleton. Meaning that there's a 0.8% chance that the wither skeleton spider jockey will spawn. This might take a while. Wait, I actually got it. Oh no, it's so fast. What? No. No, I hit a pigman. This is such a disaster. Yes, bro, finally. Oh, uh, am I okay? That honestly might have been one of the worst mobs I've had to trap so far. Before I move on to the final two mobs, I want to trap every single boss in the game in each of these cages. One for the Ender Dragon, one for the Warden, and one for the Wither. So first for the Wither, I need to get three Wither Skulls to spawn it in. And now I just need to summon it, and that's the Wither trapped easy, is what I'd like to say. Because if I just spawn the Wither like this, it'll destroy the cage and escape. So to fix this, I need barrier blocks. Because they can't be broken, and they're see-through. And to get it, I need to... Go back in time to 20W16A, enter the Nether, search around for a Treasure Bastion, then clear out the Lava Basin to reveal a barrier block, then place a dispenser with a button and slabs around it, then transfer myself back into one block at a time update, then grab a barrier block and throw it on my head, and then transfer myself back to 1.20. So now with the barriers, I can easily trap the Wither and it can't escape. Now the Warden and Ender Dragon might be a little more difficult. Because in order to get the Warden, I need to travel to the Deep Dark and summon it with these Shriekers. Now to bring it back safely, first I need to stock up my inventory with totems, and then I need to dig a huge tunnel spanning 2,000 blocks directly from the Deep Dark to its cage. But before I go and bring it back, I need to build its cage first, and I'm going for a Deep Dark design. Now in order to keep the Warden distracted and not despawn, I'll use this contraption that makes noise the Warden will constantly be attracted to. Okay, now with everything set up, I need to go get the warden, and this was probably the most dangerous thing I've ever done in my hardcore world. Uh, 
warden. Anyways, that's two out of the three bosses trapped. Now for the ender dragon, this one is gonna suck because I need to transport it from the end to the overworld and then somehow keep it trapped in this cage. And the way I plan on doing this is in the one block at a time update for the 20th time. Except this time, I actually need to go to the end and all I have to my name is my chicken. His name is Fred. So firstly, I need to go find a ruined portal and then I need to rearrange it by punching obsidian with my bare fists for 15 minutes straight. Now once I'm in the nether, I need to go searching for a fortress because if you didn't know, when you break chests that naturally spawn in them, it drops end portal frames. Now I can just go around and collect 12 frames to get the full portal. Anyways, now that I'm in the end, I need to go flying around with the skeleton to shoot all the crystals. Then I just need to go over and ride the dragon, and apparently when you fly it into the void, you'll be transported to the overworld. Yeah, this update is so weird. Now to actually trap it, I first need to go to 15W47C and build an endstone pillar with a boat on top, and then theoretically the ender dragon should fly right into it. Yes. Now I need to transfer it back to the main world, and because I can't get close to it, I'll need to use flying machines to push it to its cage. But before that, let me first make its cage. Okay, and with the cage done, let me set off this first flying machine, and then now I need to drop it down here, and it should fall into place. Perfect. And just like that, that's officially all three bosses trapped. Now, before I go back and trap the zombie horse, I have two more mobs that I want to collect, but these two are a little different, because for every mob, I've been going back in the past, but what if this time I go to the future? So welcome to 24W07A, which is the newest snapshot for the 1.21 update. And with the new snapshot, they added two new mobs, which are the breeze and the bog. So first, to find the bogged, I need to go searching for a swamp. And if you're wondering what the bogged even is, it's just a skeleton variant, just like the stray, but it shoots poisonous arrows instead of normal ones. Now that I'm here, I need to wait for it to turn night, and then they should spawn naturally here like any normal mob. Yes, there it is. And if you're wondering why I have full armor right now, it's just because it was so hard to trap when I had nothing that I had to go mining for 30 minutes. And because I can't trap these mobs back in 1.20, I need to build their cages here. So that's the bog trap. Now for the breeze, I need to find the trial chamber, which is the new dungeon added in the 1.20 21 update. And these new trial chambers can spawn anywhere between negative 20 and negative 40. So with a little help from chunk base, I can see exactly where they are. Now I just need to dig down and then the breeze will spawn naturally inside. Oh, uh, oh, okay. I might have underestimated this place. Wait, that's the breeze. Okay. I got it trapped in this room. Okay. I'm gonna keep it in this little room right now. And this guy is so annoying. So first I'm going to build a huge staircase and then it should follow me right up it. And then it'll follow me back to the cages. And that's both the bogged and the breeze trapped. And because I can't trap them in my normal world, I think these one-to-one -one hyper realistic structures should work perfectly. Now with every single mob trap, I still have one more mob to trap, which is the zombie horse. And I need to head back to the infinite dimension snapshot and then enter the zombie horse's dimension. So now with this super big platform, I'm going to AFK it overnight and then hopefully when I wake up in the morning, one spawns. Wait, one actually spawned. That is so rare. Now to actually bring it back, I need to push it into the nether portal and then transfer it. But before I put it into its cage, I'd just like to let you know that I have a discord server. So if you want to join the community or ask a question, it's linked in the description and pinned comment. Anyways, now I just need to bring it to its cage, and for the last time, that's the zombie horse trapped. And after spending three months in this video and trapping every single illegal mob, I can confidently say these mobs are illegal for a reason. And even though these mobs are removed and way cooler than what we have now, we still need to appreciate what we have in the game today.